Okay, so guys, it's time to uh, show the second stage of my wine making. Uh, you saw the other day I um, basically put the ferment on. It's now finished fermenting, and I've just taken a gravity reading. Now, got it in my little trial jar here. Final gravity, obviously I've done this on a level surface already, was 0.992. And the original gravity was, let me just get my notes, the original gravity was 1.078. So, uh, that gives me an ABV about 11.5%, which is a bit stronger than I did it last time, so that's quite good. So what I tend to do now is this is my sample done. I tend to have a little taste of the sample now just to get a rough idea of how it's going to taste. Pour this in my Grolsch, converted Grolsch bottle wine glass. It's only 100 ml, so it's not going to take too much off the brew. Mm. That's not a bad taste already. It's not brilliant, but you know. It's okay. So that let me know it's not going to be too sweet or anything for me. So, let's get on with the next stage, shall we? Next thing I'm going to do is I've got my sanitized better bottle, five gallon plastic carboy, nice and light. Um, a lot less dangerous than the metal ones. It's already been sanitized, there's some star sand foam in there. So I'm going to get my sanitized siphon tube, one second. Just take the lid off the bottom thing first. Now, always have to be careful when you handle stuff like this because it's obviously quite dark colour and it can stain. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm siphoning from the primary fermenting vessel into the secondary one couple of reasons for this. One of them is just to get rid of a lot of the spent yeast at the bottom of the fermenting bin and it's also um, makes it easier to clear because you've not got that gunk laying around. We're also going to have to shake it up in a minute once I add the stabiliser but don't want to get ahead of myself now and that will then um, obviously if you've got loads of gunk at the bottom that will take forever to clear so it's always good um, with these longer lasting kits just to siphon into a secondary. If you're using um, like a seven day kit I wouldn't bother because they're so quick and they clear pretty quickly because they have super finings but anyway this is going to take a while to siphon all the way through so I shall cut back once it's complete. So now you can see all the uh, wine has been fermented into the secondary fermenter. If I'll just show you all the rubbish that's in the bottom of the primary See, you don't want all that muck. Bits of wood chips and everything in there, that's horrible. So we don't want that in there. So the next thing we need to do is add the stabiliser. I'll just lift this up onto the counter to make things a bit easier. One second. Now the next thing I want to do is to add the stabiliser. Now what stabiliser does is it kills the yeast, basically. Now when you're bottling beer and things like that or kegging it, obviously you want some yeast left in there for carbonation. Now, as you know, we don't want to carbonate the wine, um, so just smash the bottles to pieces and we want a normal still wine. So, the stabilizer kills the yeast, stops any secondary fermentation happening. That's important to do that first. So, I've got my sanitized scissors, cut the top off like so, and then we'll pour it into the carboy. Now we give this a little bit of a shake. Okay. It's quite difficult to do this with a full carboy, so be very careful. So what this will now do, the only thing it does create a lot of gas. Now it's very important you degas your wine. The less carbon dioxide you have in here, the quicker your wine is going to clear. Now we've got the airlock on. 
I've added the stabiliser. What I need to do now is just shake it a bit to get rid of the gas. So I'm going to try and do this one handed just so you can see. Shake it like this. Can you see all that? That's all the CO2 that started to build up, trying to escape, and that will start to come out of the. Just a bit. Probably see the airlock bubble. You can see it go there. So, need to do this. It's a bit difficult to do it rigorously enough. Some people use some kind of swizzle stick thing they call that they put on the end of an electric drill. I tend to do it like this, and then when I come to bottle, I do something a little bit extra to help get rid of the gas, which I'll show you. I've got a little device to do then. But I have to do this about three or four times a day for about four days just to help the whole thing clear, and then we start adding the firings. So, so there'll be a hell of a lot of gas at first, so you need to keep out of it for a while. Sort of give it a break, come back to it again. But once you've finished degassing it for the time being, you just uh, put it somewhere dark. I'll probably put a t-shirt over it just to keep it out of the sunlight. Uh, till it's clear. Right, so now the wine has been it's finished fermenting and I've degassed it um, for the last three days by shaking it up as I showed you earlier. Next thing I need to know is add the finings. Now what the finings do is they basically make the wine uh, clear a lot quicker. How they work is that they um, basically, I don't know exactly how they work, but they just pull all the particles together that cause cloudiness and all the yeast and everything and just bring it all to the bottom. You can see bit of yeast on the bottom already but this will make a hell of a lot more now. You have two part findings. The reason for this, and Immolatius did a really good video that explained a lot more detail than I possibly could, exactly how it works. The reason is there's two different types of particles, there's positive and negative, so you need one lot of findings to get rid of the positive and one lot to get rid of the negative. Now, first one we're going to add is this stuff. I'm gonna, not going to attempt to pronounce it. All we need to do is use a pair of sanitized scissors, which I have there, chop off the top and shove it in there. Now I'm not going to film doing that because it's a bit of a nightmare, if I'm honest, trying to do it one-handed whilst filming. So you add this in, you then shake it up again, and then leave it for 24 hours before you add the second pack of the filing. So I'm going to do that now, and obviously I'll cut back again in a day once I'm adding the second part. So it's 24 hours since, well over 24 hours since I added the first lot of findings. Now I'm going to add this lot here, which is the Chitto San it's called. This is the second part of the findings, I've got the sterilised pack, sterilised scissors. Add it to this, which again I'll do off camera. Then about three to seven days the wine should be clear and ready to drink. Okay, so it's been um, over a week now since I've added the findings to the wine. And it's now completely clear. Now, if you weren't sure how to tell if your wine is clear or not, um, it's a lot more difficult with red than it is with white, because obviously with white you can see it. With red, the easiest thing to do is just get a, um, a torch and shine it. Now, <clears throat> when wine clears, it clears from the top first, and then it takes the longest to clear the stuff down the bottom. So what you need to do, shine a light at the top, and if you can see the light crystal clear through there, then gradually drag it all the way down and make sure it's as clear through this all the way to the bottom. Normally take a week to two weeks to do. Um, depends how much you degas it as well. The more you degas, the quicker it will clear. So now it's all clear. I've set my siphon tubes up as you can see with my bottling stick in here. You need 30, for a batch like this, 30 sanitized bottles. It doesn't always exactly fill 30 bottles, but it's always best to have 30 sanitizer ready to go. Um, you don't have to buy them, I haven't bought any of these. Um, all you need is uh, some good friends or uh, in-laws, parents, whoever, who drink a lot of wine and just ask them if you can have the bottles afterwards. If you uh, promise to give them maybe one or two full ones back in return, shouldn't be a problem to get 30 at all. So without further ado then, let's go get this bottled. So I've already started the suction through here. I've um, got my bottling stick ready to go, so I just need to turn the tap on. And then we start filling. Now, there we 
we go, lift that out, a little bit more. It's important you leave a bit of room between the there just for a little bit of gas to the exchange. Next one. This is quite a big bottle I've got, so this will take a little while to fill. So now I'm obviously not going to uh, film me doing all 30 bottles because that's going to be extremely boring for you guys to see. So I'll show you once you've bottled your wine, what you need to do next just to make sure you don't have any uh, exploding bottles or anything like that. So we'll take a full bottle of wine. So here we have one of my nicely full bottles. I normally try and use green ones for red wine, but I'm using this one as suggested by my lovely wife who is uh, also doing the filming for me today be a bit easier for illustration purposes to show you with a clear one. So there we go. Now we've bottled the wine. Uh, the important thing is we need to just make sure there's no residual gas in there. If there is, two things will happen depending on how you seal your bottles. If you're using screw caps, if you screw it on, there's excess gas, it will build up and your bottle will likely explode. Or if you're using a plastic stopper, which is what I use, or um, a cork, your cork might fly out of there. It's especially a problem if you're storing wine horizontally like that and it's happened to me I put it in my nice wife's nice wine rack corks flew out and spilled red wine all over the place and I've yeah. still got uh, slight marks on the walls from when that happened so don't do it yes so <laughs> it's very important so what I need to do then is just grab a plastic stopper okay is there's a few ways you can do it you can get stirring sticks and things that you can stick in the demi john but they're a bit expensive, so what I've done, which seems to work quite well, is to use this little device here. Now this device, it comes in two parts. It comes with this pump, it comes with this plastic, um, sorry, rubber stopper, which as you can see is lovely sanitised in the star sand there now. This is designed, um, if you've got half a drunk bottle of wine, you plonk this on the top, suck the air out, and it keeps it fresher for longer. Now what's the good thing this means is that it does also suck out any CO2 left in the bottle. So you plonk this in here like this, you put the pump on top, and you then pump like this. To keep going, I don't know if you can see the bubbles there it's starting to form. There's not a lot, which leads me to believe there's not a lot of gas left in this. Now if you then press this button here, there's not much noise at all. I'll do it a couple more times. I'm going to try and watch for some bubbles. There we go, a little bit of bubbles there. Not a huge amount. Again, just a little bit of gas. Okay. Now that leads me to believe <coughs> that there's not much gas in here, but what I will now do, get my sanitised plastic stopper, stick that on top here, and I'll just give it a little shake. Again, you see a little bit here. Now the important thing is when you lift it off, listen for a pop. There's a tiny little one there. So give it another shake. Again, a little bit of one. And you see the gas coming out there. And basically it takes a little while. I probably do need to get myself a property gassing stick. But Eventually, you shouldn't hear a pop anymore. Okay, one more, I think this should be done. There you go, there was no pop that time. So that leads me to believe we'll give it one last pump. That hopefully, all the CO2. Ooh. Now Okay, now that should be ready. 
the bottle. And that's it. Now this bottle uh, is wine is ready to drink now, but you can leave it. Uh, it's probably best to leave it for a while just to uh, to fully mature to get the, appreciate the full flavour of it. So that's it. I hope this was informative for you guys. If you've got any more tips on how to degas it a bit easier than I'm doing, then please let me know. Um, other than that, thanks for watching and see you again soon. Cheers.